Can we start with the sending off Lee? Um, didn't look too good. Um, and obviously there was a, wrote a lot of reaction. Did, what did you see of it? Um, I'd like to see it again. Uh, at the time, I didn't feel it was a sending off because the ball was there to be won. Um, I think the third sort of attempt to play the ball is probably on the referee's whistle, which is why it made it sort of look worse. But obviously, when the lad's rolling on the ball and he's just fouled for Mara that hasn't been given, I mean, <laughs> it's there to be won. So. You thought for Mara was going, was going for the ball? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, like yeah defi no, no, he's definitely 100% he's going for the ball, but obviously the players like jumping, diving across it both ways. So he tried to poke two, and then the third one, he's seen the ball, and then the lads dived across it. And obviously that makes it look worse. But the communication between the three um, officials was was astounding, really, how, how they've got to that. From the ref said no, the linesman, he went to speak to the linesman who said no, and then the fourth official, for some reason, has decided with the worst angle of a lot of them to give the red. And... Uh, that was the first thing he piped up with all day, so uh, that was that was a bit that. So he spoke to the assistant, but it was the fourth official. I can hear him down the thing. Yeah, I spoke to the assistant. Assistant says he didn't give it. Right. The ref went to ask the assistant what he'd seen, and he said nothing. Right. Like it's it's a yellow or whatever, and then the fourth going red, red, red down the mic. Oh, right. Like do you know what I mean? Yeah. All over excited. Will you appeal it? We'll have a look at it. It's very difficult to turn those those appeals. You know what I mean? Often it's mistaken identity, or you know I mean, we don't use VAR or anything like that. But um, yeah, we'll just have to see. Um, two, game of two halves, obviously. I mean, yeah. not much happened in the first half, and everything happened in the second. Yeah. Um, it was it was as though when the end, both teams were throwing caution to the wind. There was attack and defence almost, wasn't it? Yeah. Well, obviously I opened it up, didn't I? You know, in the first half we tried to. We was a bit young in our decision making. You know, I mean, a bit naive. We let them off the hook two or three many, two or three, too many times. Uh, little fouls, giveaways, getting in good areas, poor deliveries, uh, not getting across people quite as well as we could in the box. And but we still worked hard. You know, I don't think they had too many chances. Had Noah. Uh, we talked at half time about speeding his play up a little bit. You know, we don't like that one where they roll their foot sole over the ball, particularly against a diamond, because obviously they're. Uh, built to press from the middle and uh, it gives them a cue if you like to go and press so it's fine 18 years old fantastic player these are the little bits and bobs that uh, of course he'll learn from games like this um, and then I knew I was going to get the old uh, howlers if you like when, when I take Elias and off and bring Famara on but I wanted to match them up I wanted to match them up uh, and I felt we had the fitness the power runners and the quality and to be fair we had three great chances before some fantastic saves from Dylan Phillips who uh, my dad loves because he had him at Cheltenham um, I thought he was excellent tonight and uh, and then obviously they catch us on the break which is a little bit my fault because you open it up but at the same time we're going for the win and then I just thought I thought second half we were brilliant I thought the, the character and uh, balls if you like to to keep possession, to play short, sharp passes and the fitness and the energy from the subs and the forward players, it just gave us impetus and impetus and I'm so very proud of the lads, particularly the young lads because like I said, if I'd have wrote down a team on the beach in the summer, it wouldn't have looked anything like the one that started today. And that's no disrespect to the ones, that's actually massive respect for them to have like, like do you know what I mean, got themselves in a position, doesn't matter that we've got injuries where they're being trusted to go and win a very, very important home game. Yeah, um, Don will be happy with the, the goal. I mean, he probably just misjudged his run, didn't he, from the, to, the, to the corner of the box. But uh, other than that, again, that's uh, a very good game. Happens, yeah. We want him to be sweeper-keeper. You know, he's been brilliant for us. And the best thing about that is someone makes an individual mistake and your mates dig you out. And I think that shows a really good team spirit. And uh, no one, that will be forgotten now. Do you know what I mean? Because it's, it's had no bearing, effectively. Uh, on the on the end result. And Rodri's home debut has made, been involved in a few things. Good, in the good mate. Very very good. Very very good. I thought he was like a pest, like that sort of in a loving way, that sort of little street rat that was um, like <coughs> intelligent. You know, he, he took hits, he he bought fouls, a sharp little touch, uh, like take the ball off its line. The set to Vyman, you know, where we think he'd go and shoot, but he's opened it up for Vyman and the keepers made a great save. I thought it was good, very good. Is he ready to start yet? Well, I suppose it's the fitness element of whether he's ready to start. Sometimes you've got to throw him in, particularly now for Mara's red card doesn't get rescinded. 
so we'll have to have a look at it. But obviously, the thing for me today was that I, was, I asked for identity back, you know. And in the first half, all right, we didn't play like slick football, but in the second half, the passing and the moving and the attitude of the substitutes that came on, that's a team that wanted to win that game. And even when we had 10 men, uh, we, we had the lion's share of the play. And uh, and they were on the ropes, if you like, and they're a very, very good side. You I really, really like them. a hell of a run from a midfield player at the, at, the end of, at the end of the game to get on a, a long ball. Yeah, we were supposed to be playing holding mid, so I don't, <laughs> know, what, I don't know what he's doing there. Um, <laughs> and then obviously, even O'Dowd, I thought O'Dowd's decision not to shoot just shows that the group's growing up. Like last 30 seconds of the game, shapes to shoot, takes it into the corner, bang, game dead. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, young side, young group, too many players injured, we know that. But whatever we are, fourth or fifth in the table is uh, fantastic. It almost gives me the ump more with a Luton performance because if we had beat Luton, we'd have been top of the league today. Um, yeah, up to fourth league. Uh, fourth, tonight, yeah. So. Uh, but yeah, Fomara looked like a, a sort of man possessed when he came on. Was it a reaction to things you've, you've said? Yeah, we we had a deep week really, or deep three days. Me, Fomara, Casey Palmer, because I love them to bits, but like I have to get them, and they have to get themselves in the performance state that they got themselves into when Casey came on and when Fomara came on. Fomara is unplayable in that state. Right, he's aggressive, he's strong, he inspires others around him. And listen, there's mitigating circumstances, 17 hour flight, whatever it is from Singapore, do you know what I mean? The legs are tired, uh, it's different time zones, he's had to come back, he landed on Thursday, do you know what I mean? So there's loads of things, but it's so important to us that that character, that charisma, if you like, from the individuals, that we've got to keep challenging them to be the best player on the pitch. and. And I don't, I don't apologise for my views and my attitude towards getting yourself in a performance state. I can handle the technical errors, no problem. I can uh, tactical errors will work with them all day long. That attitude really, it's not an attitude error as in that it's a negative, but they've got to understand that it's not acceptable because when they do play like that, that's what happens. And in one sense, like I'm so happy for him because. He proved him and me right, um, scoring that goal, and obviously disappointed with the sending off. Yeah, uh, and then there was obviously uh, Ashley Williams at the back, and, and you were saying about the younger players. Is he really his leadership skills? I guess are vital in that position, in that kind of situation. Well, I think like listen, for me, he's still got two or three years in him, particularly in a side like ours where we've got a lot of legs. You know, I thought Pereira was good today, Taylor Moore was good, made good decisions. But it's no fluke that he makes that many interceptions. Do you know what I mean? It's because he reads the game so well. And um, and, and and to be fair, he's not like a, a warrior type talker. He's actually a thinker that's almost like got that quiet leadership. And uh, look, we, we're starting to, we're look, a couple of leaders coming back from injury over the next sort of uh, sort of month to eight weeks, and uh, both in their performance and the, and their character. So yeah, the, the leadership we got to keep sort of bumping up on everybody. But to have, if you like, a daddy back there to look after the young lads, obviously, is massive. Any live questions? Do you want to ask? Do you want to ask live questions or about Williams? Yeah, just just for one with you. Just on the license substitution. Obviously, you mentioned it there. You got the bird from the crowd. Some of the fans will say you brought on Fam, who you said is one of the best headers, getting on the end of crosses, getting in front of players, and you're taking off the wingers. I knew I was getting it. I knew I was getting it. It was one of those that I remember. Well, when we was on that bad run, and I took Tomlin, Abraham, and uh, I know it weren't quite as bad because we're in a better place. But it's one of those. Sometimes you got to just fortune favours a Bray, and that was no disrespect to Nicholas. It's just that I wanted to go to a diamond, and and the best suited for the diamond was obviously Callum on the outside of the diamond, and I knew we got this. All of our players got good delivery. Like Pereira's got great delivery, Rose got great delivery, Elias and great delivery, Brownhill's got good delivery, O'Dowd has got good delivery. So I knew there'd be crosses coming in. But I also wanted the intricate play and just the fact that if I was going to keep Eliasson on in that particular formation, it would probably be in the 10 
and therefore he's not in a position to get crosses in anyway uh, and therefore I had to take the hit and uh, I understand like it's fair you know what I mean the, the sort of uh, the reaction but hopefully now after seeing the second half points at least people will understand the thought process behind it I can't get on the mic and explain to everyone this is what I'm trying to do uh, at that moment in time and, and I suppose you just asked that as a general rule they try and trust uh, that the bold substitutions uh, will try and pay off.